For today's presentation, we're going to discuss this move called Parting of the Wild Horse's Mane from Guoling's Guanping Yang Tai Chi form. I know that it was one of Sifu's favorite moves because in the studio for all those years, he had a photograph in black and white, a big photograph of him in that pose. I'm going to share with you what Sifu Guo taught me about this move, but before we do that, I want to go through the basic move and how it was taught in Portsmouth Square for all those years. So the move is comes in between diagonal whip and then parting the one horse's mane and into diagonal whip and then fair leading with the shuttles. Normally, if I'm doing the set commencing in this direction, then it would be Diagonal the whip, parting the wild horse's mane, turn into diagonal the whip on the line, and then fair lady works the shuttles. But for the presentation, for more clarity, I'm going to start off with diagonal whip in this direction so that you can see better the movement of parting of the wild horse's mane. So again, we're going to start with diagonal whip here. Come back to this pose. Our forearm is about chest level, going straight across. And the other hand, the off hand, is a fist by your hip. And from here, basically just stepping. And the elbow comes up as an uprooting or striking. And then also the movement is on a diagonal. So when you're performing the form, it's kind of a long rectangle. It's gonna be a diagonal across the rectangle. And the move itself goes like a zigzag across that diagonal line. So from here, the first move is in this direction. Then the next move is gonna be across that diagonal line into this direction. And then this direction. There's no set amount of uh, movements that you do. It could be two or four or six because you're going to end up on the right side. So for this demonstration, I'll do six. Just to see it more clearly. Okay. Step to the left. Step to the right. Step to the left. And then to the right. Turn on the diagonal line and do diagonal whip. And from here, it goes into fair lady work the shuttle. One more time. From diagonal whip, come back. And the stance is fairly upright. And then as you step, it's upright. Most people understand this movement as either uprooting from here, kind of uprooting, or also an elbow strike, forearm strike. I did it from the other side because of uh, space. But uh, one morning, I am performing my parting of the wild horse's mane, and Sifu came up to me to uh, kind of show me something else about the move. And so Sifu uh, comes up to me and he signals for me to get ready for him to uh, do that move against me. So <clears throat> as he comes up like this, I kind of naturally try to block his arm from coming up. And as I block his arm from coming up, all of a sudden I feel him punching me in the stomach. After that, he kind of gave a big smile and you could see his gold teeth and he kind of, and then walked away. So what that showed me on the move was, was not only the forearm strike that most people are uh, aware of, 
but it was also this low fist in this position could be a punch coming up underneath that strike. So after I kind of understood that in, in many of my videos, I kind of talk about how your understanding of the function, not necessarily application, but the function can change the way that you perform the move in the Dalu, the fixed form. After that, it slowly kind of evolved from this basic just stepping like this, like a lot of people do, to actually kind of understanding this force that would be generated for that punch. So now when I do my form, my parting of the wild horse's mane move looks more like, and I'm always conscious of coming in with that offhand into this punch position going forward rather than just being kind of dead. Again, from dad to whip, stepping into the first pose and then circling. So, in the classical presentation of the form, the form is moved. Parting of the wild horse's mane always ends on this side so that you can pivot and do the diagonal whip on the right side. From there, further the works the shuttles. move. In that uh, video where I did one thing on a 4x6 mat and I learned a lot about how to uh, alter the movement, not really change the classical move form itself, but to be able to adapt it to the space that you're in. So sometimes normally in the classical structure you'd be doing two or four or six moves. But if you found yourself coming to the corner, you might have to do it on the opposite side. So what I found is from here, if I'm on this side, instead of this side here, I could just pivot and go right into diagonal whip. Or from here, I am here and I'm here, I can actually step back into diagonal whip to preserve the space. So uh, again, on that video on doing it in a small space, it's good to learn how to adapt your form so that you use changeable to according to the space that you're in. And if you're doing a demonstration or you find yourself all, all of a sudden coming into that corner where you have to have space to do the next move, you need to learn how to alter it a little bit so that you can um, have, still have the flow, but a good presentation. As always, these presentations are from my own viewpoint and personal experience of studying with Sifu Guo. Maybe other people had ty other types of experience with it, but all I'm trying to do in my um, YouTube presentations is to share my experience of studying with Sifu Go as a direct student and kind of a relay and kind of share some of my own personal uh, interactions and experiences with Sifu uh, about what I've learned uh, through these years. So thank you very much.